All right, guys, I've been putting off talking about Windows 11 for a while now, and I'm kind of glad that I did because it's kind of like the story that just keeps on giving, uh, especially if you're on an AMD system. So there's a few things we'll talk about with Windows 11, why maybe you don't see it as an option, maybe why you shouldn't install it as an option, and we're gonna talk about the negative effects that's happening with many people's systems because clearly Microsoft has dropped the ball on this one. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Mino. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. So before we talk about the latest drama around Windows 11, let's go and talk about why you may not even have noticed that it's available to you. First of all, Windows 11 it requires TPM, or Trusted Platform Module, to be able to run. Now, a lot of modern, modern motherboards made in the last couple of years do actually have a TPM mode where you can go into the, into the BIOS, turn that feature on, and then what'll happen is when you log into Windows 10, you'll actually see a pop-up then saying, congratulations, your system can run Windows 11. Would you like to upgrade now? And if it's anything like Windows 8.1 was, uh, I'm kind of curious as to whether, in fact, sound off down below if this has happened to you. I've, none of our systems here actually have TPM turned on, so we haven't been seeing any of the uh, Windows 11, congratulations, you can upgrade for free kind of a thing, just like we saw with Windows 8.1 or Windows 8 to Windows 10, where you'd see the pop-up, and then you basically could say, Yes, install now, or install later, or snooze, or remind me, kind of like other pop-ups that happen in Windows. But what started happening is Microsoft was not, they weren't happy with the adoption rate. I mean, they were giving away Windows 10, and they weren't happy with the adoption rate. Uh, remember, Windows 10 also included a lot of the spyware features that we turn off every single update now, where they want to cookie everything, then serve you ads, and take information, and take your data, and take your location, and just have Cortana constantly listening. Like, all that sort of stuff was on by default. And one of the reasons why people like myself and, and Barnacles and, and almost everyone in this space, specifically Barnacles, because he really knew the inside inner workings of, of what Windows was doing at the time, because he helped write all that prior to, uh, you know, his his departure from Microsoft, is that they wanted to sell the customer data, which is why they were giving it away for free. The real business was selling your data. And so people weren't adopting it fast enough. And what started happening was it got really aggressive to where if you didn't say no, well, they didn't say no, therefore that kind of means yes, and it would auto install. And that's why it ended up happening with one of my systems where it auto updated to Windows 10 because I wasn't there while I left the system on to tell it, no, don't update. So it triggered an update that night and I woke up in the morning and it was like, welcome to Windows 10. And I was like, son of a biscuit. So anyway, fast forward now, Windows 11, I'm curious if they're gonna start doing that. But the TPM mode, I mean, that's sort of basic, that, that, that's a hardware level security thing that um, I don't know if I necessarily agree with or don't agree with, I don't have a lot of experience with TPM, but you may not be seeing Windows 11 option because your motherboard either may not support it, doesn't have the mode, or it's not enabled. I don't really wanna do a video showing you guys how to enable it because of the reasons I'm about to show you, I don't necessarily want people upgrading to Windows 11 at this time. So first and foremost, you might have seen this in the news already. When Windows 11 official launch came out, it was noticed that AMD Ryzen CPU users, specifically those in the 2000 series Ryzen. Now we've had obviously 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000, which was like laptop only, and then 5000, which is the latest Zen architecture, has been seeing slowdowns up to 15% CPU performance loss in various single-threaded performance uh, or applications that use single thread. So if we were to do like a Cinebench single thread run, we would actually see a before and after score decrease. And latency increases in the way the Infinity Fabric and the memory is working with Ryzen specifically. And what's funny about that is in the initial launch, it was noticed that, that that's a thing. And people started raising their flag and going, what the hell, why are we seeing massive slowdowns on AMD CPUs only? Now we know Microsoft and Intel have been collaborating heavily on uh, Windows 11. That's the way all the Windows launches have gone. It's always like they collaborated with Intel specifically. On this one, they're collaborating the launch of Windows 11 a little bit ahead of Alder Lake because of the 
hybrid CPU that we already talked about Alder Lake, how it's a hybrid CPU. You got E cores, which are efficiency cores, and P cores, which are performance cores that operate independent of each other and they need a specific scheduler inside of Windows to handle that, op that, that handoff so that it knows what tasks go to E core, what tasks go to P core. So that's why Intel and Microsoft are collaborating heavily on Windows 11. The problem is it looks like they spent all their time collaborating with Intel and uh, basically if making that handoff as efficient as possible when it comes to the scheduler to where the scheduler is almost penalizing AMD users specifically on the Ryzen platform. Haven't seen many reports of people talking about older Intel CPUs being affected by this. So I'm curious, if you have an older Intel CPU or I guess any current Intel CPU or, or older, are you seeing any sort of slowdown or is it kind of like across the board? Now to put this in perspective as to why 15% is a major deal, when we saw slowdowns of up to 5% on Intel and AMD CPUs when it came to the Spectre and meltdown issues back in like 2017, that people were absolutely outraged. The fact that any sort of code change slash security hole fix would slow down your hardware was a massive issue to most people. Now, the funny thing about that is AMD was less affected than Intel at that time because AMD's microcode architecture was a lot newer than Intel's or Intel had kind of been just copying it over for decades, at, well, not decades, but many generations of CPU that just copy and pasted over to the newest GPUs or CPUs, excuse me, they had a bigger effect where AMD was able to actually pivot and it wasn't affected as much because of the newer architecture. On this one here, it's specifically affecting AMD CPUs. So if you were mad about three to 5%, you'd be livid about 15. But you'd also be livid considering the fact that there was a, there was a network bug inside of Windows 11 that was specifically affecting the killer network cards, as well as, and I haven't even heard of this one, if I know the truth, maybe I'm, that's because I just, I'm not an N plus administrator or a network administrator. I've never heard of SmartBite, but another a SmartBite uh, networking uh, card was getting slowdowns in Windows 11. So Microsoft re recently submitted a patch that's designed to fix that, and AMD users noticed an even greater slowdown, where they slowed down even farther than the 15% initially. And the sad part about that is the fact that AMD was, AMD was already working on a fix to try it on their end to fix whatever was happening with the scheduler and the microcode to bring that performance back that users had lost. The latest patch slowed it down even farther, causing them to now have to go back to the drawing board and work directly with Microsoft to get this figured out. So if you're an AMD Ryzen user on Windows 11, and you, don't, you haven't actually tested this, you probably don't realize you're anywhere between 15 to 20% slower than you were before you upgraded to, upgraded to Windows 10. So here's a, this is from TechSpot specifically, and they did a test on this. So I'll put a link to their article down below. I'm a little afraid to do that. I don't wanna accidentally DDoS their site, but I'm gonna actually read the quote here so that maybe we don't bring their site down. But they said, to put things in context, they tested a 2700X, by the way. They heard the reports of the 2700X being affected by this. They tested it and their results uh, were exactly in line with what they were seeing online. So this is their exact quote from this article. It says, to put things in context, the release build of Windows 11 slows down AMD CPUs by up to 15% in some workloads such as esports games and single threaded applications. Esports titles tend to be really high FPS type games. That's obviously a CPU load. That's why you would notice esports having an effect uh, with a slower CPU. It's like literally gonna reduce the max FPS that you can get. And high FPS game is definitely CPU loaded. The folks over at Tech Power Up were curious enough to fire up the ADA64 cache and memory benchmark and see if anything has improved after this first update. What they found was that the L3 cache latency of the Ryzen 7 2700X CPU, which is around 10 to 11 nanoseconds on Windows 10, had increased to 17 nanoseconds on the release build of Windows 11. Pause. That's 70% slower already in terms of the latency, uh, the cache latency, and you guys know cache heavily affects your performance. The cache latency from Windows 10 to 11, right off the bat. And currently, after this latest patch, sits at 32 to 34 nine, uh, nanoseconds after the first monthly patch. That is greater than three times slower, or, or three times higher cache latency. So that's where you're seeing a lot of this slowdown come from. So that's not looking too good for the tinfoil hat. Uh, and I'll put my tinfoil hat on. I have no doubt Intel and Microsoft have spent so much time optimizing Windows 11 for the Alder Lake hybrid CPU uh, di design that 
no time has been spent truly optimizing for any of AMD Ryzen's chiplet design. And so I feel like because of that infinity cache and that latency that we're talking about, that has completely been left out of the equation in terms of optimization, which is really sad considering the fact that we all know that right now, AMD and Ryzen, although still not the greater market share, if you look at the growth over the last five years, is absolutely the fastest growing CPU adoption rate that we've seen in CPUs in a long, long time. So there's clearly a bias happening between Microsoft and Intel. And that's why I asked earlier, if you're on an older Intel CPU, are you seeing these same slowdowns? Or is the scheduler literally affecting AMD only? Moving on, AMD and Microsoft are working together at this time for a fix. Maybe they should have worked together prior to launch to make sure a fix was never actually necessary. So we all know Microsoft is a shit company. We all know that Microsoft is, is terrible when it comes to its policies, when it comes to its, its ideologies and the way that they handle the operating system when it comes to, to user data. And they'll do whatever it takes to make money, obviously, and working with Intel. Intel have, I don't wanna believe that Intel strong-armed in some way Microsoft to just not make AMD slower, but not spend time with them. I'd, I'd like to believe that's not the case, but we've seen this sort of stuff happen in the past where there's biases that happen and money talks, and if the money's there, Microsoft will follow the money. So that's just kind of the perfect storm to be, that goes against um, you know, AMD, unfortunate AMD adopters. Now, the nice thing is, well, I say nice thing, but you do have 10 days from the time you've updated to Windows 11 to be able to roll it back. There is a go back button that you can uh, go. You guys have to Google search this, but there is a there is in the settings where you can go back and actually literally go back to Windows 10. You only have 10 days to do that, though. So this is specifically for those that have updated to Windows 11. I always say update. I hate that term, but installed Windows 11, decided they don't like it. You have 10 days to go back. Um, I feel like that should be longer, especially with all these bugs and stuff that usually take time to be worked out with the first versions of any sort of OS. Uh, and so we see major surface packs and stuff come out. I feel like they should get 30 days at least, maybe 60 days. But Microsoft wants you to adopt it because who knows what they've thrown in Windows 11 that hasn't been uncovered yet when it comes to spying on you and stealing your data. Anyway, sound off down below with your comments on Windows 11 if you're a user. I'm not interested in your opinion about it if you haven't used it. Sound off down below if you've been using it. What has your experience been like? What's your hardware? Have you noticed any sort of slowdown? Did you roll back? And your honest opinion about whether or not you would recommend it. All right, guys, thanks for watching this Talking Head video. Hopefully I saved someone a headache from dealing with this monstrosity so far that is Windows 11, which is gonna suck because I do want to use Alder Lake and test out that hybrid CPU. And if I want to test out that hybrid CPU, I kind of have no choice but to run Windows 11 or I won't get any of the hybrid handoff scheduler that is the whole benefit to it. So anyway, I digress. It's part of the job and I'll suffer through it for videos for you guys. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.